Having trouble winning games in Madden 23? Help me! Help me! The answer might be as simple as a setting in your coaching adjustments you're not doing. Got it! As there are several huge advantages that can be found here on offense and defense that you should be doing every single game. So if you want to see what coaching adjustments I'm using to get results like this, oh my god! Stick around after the intro. The is here. For the cheapest, fastest, most reliable butt coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. I'm at Money Shot and in today's video I'm going to show you exactly what every coaching adjustment does so you have a better understanding of what is best to use right now in Madden 23. But before I do, if you are enjoying the content and want to see more, as always, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comments section as it really helps out the channel. And if you need even more help on offense or defense, you can also check out my ebooks as well as every ebook comes with a free 15 page tips and strategy guide as well as some of the best money play breakdowns in the game. All you have to do is click the links in the description or the top pinned comment to have them sent directly to your email for instant download. This is the second video this year that I've put out on this topic as I had a lot of people request an updated version but I go more in depth into certain settings in that video. So if you guys missed that and you want to know more about this topic I will have a link in the description for that video as well as an on-screen pop at the end of this video so stick around for that. We're going to start off on offense and I would say that pretty much all of these offensive ones are pretty useless. I'm not going to go over them in depth like I have in the past because in reality I don't use any of them. The only one that I use is is ball carrier pretty much every single game that I play I set my ball carrier to conservative let me know in the comment section if you ever said to anything else but ultimately aggressive to me just causes too many fumbles and it's not worth it I said to conservative because I'm a conservative player I play the offensive side of the ball in a way that I really just want to make sure that I I don't fumble that I don't get too many turnovers because possessions is how you win in Madden 23 in my experience if you set ball carrier to conservative your running back will never fumble if you watch my game plays you probably can't find a single time that my running back fumbles through any of them now when you're also set to conservative quarterbacks rarely fumble receivers rarely fumble I would say my entire team rarely fumbles throughout the entire game based off of my conservative setting and if I ever do fumble in a game it's because I forgot to set my ball carrier to conservative so every single time you play offense as soon as the game starts always set your ball carrier to conservative you can do this at the kick return menu if you get the ball on a kick return and somebody tries to kick to a fullback to make your fumble fullback you can do your coaching adjustment before you even do a kickoff so you can set it from there but set your ball cons carrier to conservative as early as possible in your game plays now the defensive side is really where you're going to have the most uh, adjustments to make because because I probably changed just about every single one of these with the exception of probably tackling which you don't really get too much of an advantage and I would also say auto flip and auto alignment we'll start from the top down uh, auto flip sometimes I actually do take this off depending on what defense I'm using but for the most part I leave it on because it does help auto alignment this one here is really just left best left at default because if you try to set it to base base is really good as far as hiding what your coverage is but if you have a strength like if you're playing a press defense this will take away the ability to press so it really doesn't make any sense uh, man aligning if you only play man coverage that sounds like it would help but to me it also cross mans and has a lot of mistakes so this one here is just best left to default when it comes to ball in the air defense this is one of the ones that I really wanted to make this video about is because ball in the air defense has changed so many times over the year you can play balanced if you really don't want to mess with it but I find that the best two are still going to be either play ball or uh, play receiver and it's really hard for me to say I was for a while the last video I put out I was telling everybody play receiver because I felt like it forced more knockouts but I felt like since the last patch that I noticed my interceptions went way down so I started playing the ball more often and my interceptions went way back up so I would say it's really best to play ball I feel like EA kind of patched this undercover I didn't really tell anybody in the last patch update so to me if you want interceptions you definitely want to play ball if you want to get knockouts you want to play receiver that's really the best way to do it next up we have cornerback matchups and I have people ask me all the time in the comments section how I get my best cornerback on the team's best receiver it's really just setting this to buy overall it's really that simple uh, you can do it by speed there are times where if you're playing against like a Tyreek Hill uh, or you just have a major speed disadvantage if you don't have the right guy on the right you know receiver you're gonna want to set it by speed if you have a fast cornerback or if you have a fast receiver but you don't have a, a fast quarterback as your number one cornerback you're probably gonna want to go by speed sometimes just to make sure that guys like Tyreek Hill doesn't take the top off the defense very easily well that's still gonna be difficult because if you have a fast cornerback who's a bum it's not really gonna help with things like you know other routes on the play so by overall is really the best setting to go with 
but if you notice that you can't keep up with a specific receiver, you might have to switch over to buy speed. Or if you're facing a guy like Mike Williams, who's six foot five and is mossing you a lot, you might have to go buy height. Now, when it comes to some of these like option defense, this is really simple. All you gotta do is set this to conservative. This is gonna focus on the quarterback. I went over this in, at length in past videos. Basically, if you don't do this, your, your quarterback has a much better chance of taking off with nobody covering him, which is not a good thing. So at the end of the day, it's always best to have this by conservative. Now, when it comes to strip ball, I think it's best to go with conservative as well because you'll have a less chance of broken tackles. And to me, you don't really, if you go with aggressive, you don't really get AI strips anyway. So there's no real point. There's no real positive, but you will get a higher chance of broken tackles and face mask penalties, which are much worse. So at the end of the day, I always go with conservative on this because I, once again, I'm a conservative player. To me, winning games is about consistently doing the right thing over and over and over and you know limiting mistakes and this is going to be something that will do that when it comes to tackling however conservative is probably not the best way to go because it increases the chances of allowing yards after contact which means you'll get a lot of fall forward animations you can do this but i typically leave this on balanced once again aggressive is a problem because you'll have higher broken tackles which i don't want so conservative is an option but i don't find that i really don't want them carrying my defenders after the after the after you know contact so to me i just keep this at balance now the ones that people probably care about the most are going to be your flats uh, I really, you have two flats and two curl flat options. When I go with, when I go with zone drop flats, if I have opponents who are running a lot of swing passes out of the backfield, like say, uh, or just running the ball a lot, setting your zone flats to zero are going to be best to stop those type of routes. Plays behind the line of scrimmage. If you set your zone flats to zero, whether you're in a cover three hard flat or a cover two with hard flats, your cornerback's going to drop down to zero depth right away meaning that they will stop plays behind the line of scrimmage best so if you've got somebody running a lot of stuff behind the line of scrimmage or they're running the ball a lot zero is best but when it comes to pass plays uh, routes like flat routes uh drag routes um you know things like that you're going to want to set it to five so if your opponent is passing a lot short five is going to be best when it comes to curl flats, which is typically found in cover three, there's two good options. Again, 20 yards is going to be best for cutting off slants, while 25 is going to be best for cutting off deep crossers. If you have an opponent who's really just running slants and deep crossers all game, you don't really know which one they prefer, you could always set zone drops to 20 and then curl flats to 25, and you can make those adjustments uh, you know, in play and really have the best of both worlds. So it really depends on what your opponent's doing. So if you want to have options to both, you can do that with setting uh, each individual flat at 20 and 25. When it comes to zone drop hooks, I really don't change this too much because I really don't feel like zone drop hooks are really effective anyway. I'd rather man my zone drop, drop hooks to either the tight end or whoever's crossing into the area. But you can also do this to kind of match the depth of the field. If your opponent needs 15 yards, you can match it to 15 yards and it'll have a, a slightly better chance uh, to stopping that. But at the end of the day, I just leave these to default. I don't feel like they're really that great anyway and I really feel like they do a great job. When it comes to zone coverage, I always set the match no matter what defense I'm running. I hear a lot of people say that it's best set to match when you're running cover for match, but at the end of the day, any zone coverage I find probably performs better in a match because in previous years past, they've always had matching coverages in cover three, cover two, cover four. So no matter what coverage you're in, I find it's better. At the end of the day, there is no 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 penalty to doing this, so I find it's best just to set it to match. So whenever I go into a gameplay, I always do the exact same thing. I always just go right to the bottom. I just set to match. I set this guy here to 25. Set this guy here to five. Set my conservatives. Set my uh, matchup by overall. And then go play ball. So it's a really quick setup because, like I said, I use the exact same setup every single time. So that's that's the vid. If you guys want to see more videos like this, like I said, this is the third part that I did like this. In previous videos, I did go over uh, in depth more with video versions showing what actually changes when you do this. So if you want to see a more in depth version, I will have a pop up on screen right now. So make sure to click that if you want to see more information about that. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.